Hello folks, welcome to our channel. In today's demonstration, we are going to see how to migrate a server from on-premise to the cloud. You might be running the server in VMware or VirtualBox or some other virtual efficient platform on your on-premise data center. In today's demo, I'm going to use VirtualBox as my demo virtualization platform and move a Linux VM from on-premise to the cloud. We have a GitHub article which can walk us through all the steps that is necessary to do this activity. I'll put the URL of this article in the description so that you can follow along with me. And the most important prerequisite is having a VM in some kind of a virtualization platform. And we are going to export that VM into a VMDK image, import it into our AWS platform. Preferably one VM, an AWS CLI with administrative access so that you can have the import privileges and create some IAM roles. First step is creating the VM or if it is already there, just exporting the VM and uploading the VMDK image that we have exported into our S3. Once that is done, we are going to need an IAM role so that we can convert this image that is in S3 into an AMI. For that particular IAM role, there are some prerequisites. For example, it requires a trust policy so that it can communicate with other AWS services. Create the IAM role, we need to ensure that it has to be a name called as VM import. This is very, very important. You need to have the IAM role, this uh, naming convention only, otherwise you will get an error. This policy also requires some privileges for reading the S3 bucket and creating some snapshots and registering that image into your EC2 console. So we need to attach this role policy to that IAM role. As of now, there is no IAM role as VM import in my account. And I'm going to use this S3 bucket and backup. And under that, I have created a subdirectory called as VM import. And as of now, there is nothing there. We are going to upload the VM image here. And likewise, I'm just going to quickly refresh my screen here. There are no AMIs in my Frankfurt region. This is the VM that we are going to import or play around with. And as of now, I'm going to have only one user ID that is called as root. Typically in production, what will you will do is you'll create an SSH key and use that key for authentication uh, when it is launched as an EC2 instance. To make it really easy, I'm going to use the root user itself. And then I'm going to use a CentOS version 7.6 for this demo. Before creating an image of this machine, I'm going to power it off so that we can create an appliance of this VM. Let us go to our virtual box. You can do this from virtual box or VMware. Both of them have a very similar interface. Basically, this are, there are two VMs here and I'm selecting my CentOS VM. And if I go to file and click on export appliance, I will be able to export this VM into an VMDK format. We are on the export appliance page and I'm going to select the VM that I'm interested in exporting. Click on that. And if you are comfortable in doing it in export mode, go ahead and choose that. If not, just follow the GUI. In this screen, make sure that you are choosing the OVF virtualization 2 format. And if it is on OVA, change it to OVF because if you see it here clearly, it is going to create separate files. One of the most important files we are after is the VMDK file extension format. And make sure you wanted to store it in a particular location which you have access to. And I'm going to choose all the MAC addresses that I that are attached to this machine to be exported. So go ahead and click on next and click on export and the export activity will take a couple of minutes or more than that depending upon the size of your VM. Now the VM export is completed. Let us go ahead and check the folder. What are all the files that are created? Here you can see there are three files created. We are particularly interested in this file and we are going to upload this file into our S3 bucket now. I am in the end underscore backup and under that there is a subdirectory called as VM hyphen import and I'm going to upload here. The upload task usually runs depending upon your bandwidth speed, have the task completed. Meanwhile, we can go ahead and create the IAM role as well as the trust policies and other things that are required to import this. The first thing that we are going to do is set up our environmental variables, especially the bucket name and the VM image. Then we are going to create the trust relationship for the IAM role. As of now, there are no JSON files. The first file that we are going to create is our trust policy. We have done that. Then we are going to create the IAM role now. And remember, I am creating the IAM role with the name VM import. Make sure you use the same name, otherwise you will get an error. So we have created the IAM role with that particular trust policy that we just now created. Now we are going to create some permissions and attach that permissions to this role. So this permissions is going to be named as role policy.json. We are going to use this role policy and attach it to our IAM role. So now my role policy is also attached. Let us quickly go to the console and see if this is being done correctly. We have the IAM role, VM import, and if I go to my trust relationship, we can see that VM 
import export is there i just refresh my screen so that we can see the policy here and you can see here the same policy and remember if you are using the policy that is in the github article the bucket name should be automatically updated if you are going to use a different variable make sure you are getting the policy done correctly let us go ahead and see our if our s3 task has been completed and i can see here it is success and that we have our image so our import task requires a container file that is a json file because we are going to tell the import task what format is our our disk is in in this case it is going to be in a vmdk format and if you have some bring your own license especially for windows images then you will mention the license format also here if not you can go ahead and add a generic description saying this is the centos image this is the bucket where my image is in this is the name of my image and put it all into a json file and give it to the import task so let us go ahead and do this now so let us begin the import activity you will get a status message as pending and using this import task id you will be able to query the status of this import activity and find out what is going on in the background and wait for it until the status is completed successfully let us query for the import activity and you can see here it says message is converting let us check the status one more time now you can see here the status been updated or the message has been changed to updating so it has converted the image and it is creating an ami on the background you can see that it is preparing the ami now the task is completed let us go to our ec2 dashboard and see we have a new ami there let us go ahead and refresh our screen and you can see here there's a new ami created so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to quickly launch a machine here with this ami let us go ahead and connect to it i'm just going to make sure i'm able to connect to it let us copy the ip address remember we are not going to use key based authentication because we just created a user here we do not add any keys although we asked amazon to launch a machine with, with a key but we will not be able to use that key to connect so i'm just going to put in the username here i'm going to take a minute to come online so i'm going to put in the password which i used on my on premise system so i've got connected here and if i do my host name if f you will see this is the same machine that we were having in on premise and we have moved it to cloud now this is how you migrate your vm from on premise to the cloud you should be able to do that at scale by automating the entire process of exporting it importing it and creating an ami out of it i would highly recommend you to go ahead and try this if you have any problems put them in the comment section we can learn from each other Thanks for watching. Happy learning.